My name is Steve Hauser. I am a consulting arborist as well as a certified arborist over 40 years in the Dallas area. I'm a trustee with the Texas Historic Tree Coalition, uh, a group that works to find, research, recognize, preserve, and celebrate our most significant trees in the state of Texas. We can be romantic about the trees that have been here a long time, but I think it's frankly a tad bit unfair. Cross Timber's name came from the early settlers who tried to cross through this timbered area because it was so thick and dense. It was also referred to as the cast iron forest. In other words, it's very hard to penetrate the cast iron forest. I just think if you were an early settler trying to get through an area that was almost all thorns, because that's basically what it was. Great if you're a bird trying to find habitat to get away from whatever your predators are. It was great for finding food, and it was great for shelter, but it wasn't great for humans that had to try to find their way through it. It, it appears to require the conservation of the cross timbers ecology, uh, which is a, a vast expanse of an ecosystem that goes all the way from Kansas down through Oklahoma into North Texas. There's two primary legs that come down into Texas, a west and an east, of which Colleyville is on the east part of the Cross Timbers ecology. The wildlife that in, inhabit the area is very diverse, uh, as is the plant and tree cover. Uh, there's, of course, post oaks and blackjack oaks, eastern red cedars, mesquites, so it is a very unique ecology. Uh, and one that is dwindling. If you've read anything about the cross timbers, there's very little of it that remains intact. That's what makes this particular property and any of the cross timbers that remains extremely important to try to preserve and conserve, partly for future generations and partly because of the benefits to the animals and the wildlife. You know, before there was any development in the city, the eastern cross timbers pretty much took up the majority of the entirety of the city. Most of Colleyville is developed. There's just a few little remnant pieces of property left over and when the majority of the developments occurred in the past, the trees were taken down, but what happens after development? People plant trees in their yards and pretty soon it's solid trees around the houses. According to the United States Forest Service, planting our new small trees and the small stature trees don't provide as many benefits as these large old trees that can provide 70 to 80 percent more benefits from cleaner air to the wildlife to the pure ecology uh, it's the large old trees uh, that do more good than these small newly planted trees and the newly planted trees have to live for hundreds of years before they can do as much good as some of your large old post oaks that are 200, 250 years old or more, some of them. Post oaks are very slow growing to begin with. Some of the trees on this property are easily over 200 years old. Secondly, it's a very sensitive tree. You can't build very close to it. You can't change a lot around it uh, before they just won't survive. They just don't like uh, to be messed with. Uh, they're highly drought tolerant which is the other thing that makes them so critical. In the future, we're not gonna have a lot of water to water our lawns with. And then it's gonna be very critical that we have poke stokes. Yes, development in a place like this that's full of trees is going to take out a significant number of trees. I said that last time, there's, there's no way around it. I was part of Vision North Texas of finding better ways to build in the future. We have 10 principles for development excellence. We have different growth scenarios that these towns can choose what growth scenario do we want to choose? With one of them being the green region that offers the most amount of benefits of any potential way that we could grow. And say, okay, because someone doesn't want them developed, let's purchase the properties for what people have put into them and, and make them parks forevermore. We're gonna have to learn to do a better job of preserving some of these natural areas. Uh, and that's where Colleyville, I would encourage the officials to try to preserve more of these properties, especially since I was told 98% of your town is already developed and you already have 2% left. Surely we can preserve some of that 2%.
surely we have enough money set aside to be able to preserve at least a little bit of that for our children. It's the least we could do.